Hey, this is Letty with Golden Boy Insider, and I'm here with my guy Eric Tudor. Eric, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Okay, you're very calm. I feel like it's such a big weekend. It's so energyful. This calm is needed. Is this how you naturally are when fights are about to occur? Loki feels like calm before the storm. Of course, you know, um, it could get a little like tense in your mind and a lot of things going on with the weight cuts and stuff. So it's definitely important to like stay calm. You know, I, I know what I'm here for. So, yeah, you know, I'm just just patiently waiting, man. And I know that you being a part of this, being a part of this card, being a part of this weekend, it's hitting St. Patrick's Day weekend. There's such a luck behind everything. The vibe feels good. Um, but we're talking about the press conference earlier. And although there are so many amazing matchups, it also feels like there's so much, I guess, just familiarity. Everybody, clearly no, not everyone's going to win, but everybody wants to see each other win. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that same camaraderie within the card? Um, everyone wants to see in what sense? Like just like in career, in life. You know, there's the, we just come off of a pandemic. We just come off of so much where we're inside. We feel a little bit off. And now doors are opening and now we're able to do the things that we love. You're passionate about boxing. So seeing that energy and people moving forward, does that help you kind of just move forward with your career, but also see that for other fighters? Of course, you know, when you're surrounded by a lot of ambitious people and you see everyone is on a, on a mission and everyone wants to, you know, get to where you want to go, it, it gives you a certain type of type of drive, type of hunger. So, yeah, it's definitely like motivating being around everyone for right. sure. You know, we talk about like uh, like character origin stories, like in a Marvel film, right? What would you say that point of of you living life would be the origin story of like, I'm going to get into boxing. I'm going to do it for myself. Um, Well, you know, I would say the turning point of that was um, I think when I went to my first national tournament is when I really like realize like this is what I want to be doing you know because it's one thing to start you know you're just a young kid at a right. gym but then when you go and you see all this talent around the nation and all that um that's when you know you kind of realize like this is what I want to do you know seeing everyone so yeah I, de I definitely I definitely realized that at a young age for sure that yeah. this is what I, I was going to be doing like I could really do this like yeah. this, this is fun for a lot of us but also yeah. like there's this thing that's kicking me and it feels like this is purposeful too yeah. right yeah and where has that led you? You know, clearly we're here. We're in Long Beach. It's going down this weekend. But that has to be like your sights are so much further. Mm -hmm. We're in such an age where social media has such a backing. You can go wherever you want. You can be an influencer of any sorts. You know, your influence is in the ring. Albeit very brutal at times, it has to come with the spark of like hope for others mm -hmm. to do just like you and follow footsteps. So I think um, I was talking to about this with another boxer earlier the importance of having a figure to look up to do you sense that too like even just even as young as you are having that responsibility of people are looking up to me it's it's definitely new to me for sure you know but um uh definitely it's i felt that before you know when i went to one of my old gyms or whatever and you know for for a young kid who just started boxing to look up to me is a yeah. crazy feeling because I was once in that position yep. and I was once looking at other guys looking up to them so to see the wheels turn is crazy it's been an amazing journey and you know I'm just blessed you know man and this is just confirmation like you're in the right place right time it's meant exactly, to be exactly exactly who was like the fighter that you were so excited to be like oh my gosh like not only are they fighting but like I get to see it I get to be there and now I get to be a part of the same industry the same game um like who was that fighter for you like that idol for you the first one you know that that really got you believing well, that you could do it you know when i first started boxing in dc i had a i had an old school tra trainer mm -hmm. and um he made me watch a lot of clips on muhammad ali actually so Sheesh, she know, took I, you all the yeah, way to the classics exactly and um just a young kid on youtube looking at muhammad ali at mike tyson the old greats you know so mm -hmm. Definitely, I, I when I first started, I definitely was more on like the old school boxers and looking up to them. So, right. yeah, that, but definitely that was my first like idol was Muhammad Ali for yeah. sure. You know, a lot of a lot of boxing too is 
the air around you, the the it's not a character because it's the beast part of you that you bring to the ring. And that was what was beautiful about Mahalit, Muhammad. He can carry himself super well inside of a ring, incredibly well-spoken, incredibly well-educated. In that ring, you could not tell him apart from a lion, though, you know? I feel like I feel like that's actually a, a flip that a lot of us fighters have. I've seen it before in the past. It's like, And even people telling me, like, you know, you're such a nice kid outside the ring, but when once the bell rings, it's like, you know, there's just a flip that goes off. And yep. I feel like as a fighter, that's something you need to have, you know, yeah. just that, that switch. Sheesh. It's like Clark Kent and Superman. Yeah. All right. No, okay. But I'm taking, I'm I'm showing my age because I know you've probably never seen one of these little antique never, never. things. But you're, you know, you know the classics. You know the Muhammad Ali's. <laughs> he would know what this is. This Sakam, uh, Sakam, wait, Rockam Sakam. And we're going to fight each other. Okay. If I win. You owe me. I'm just kidding. You don't owe me anything. Okay, you you owe me a high five. All right. Okay. Okay. Your calmness is scary. I hope you know. All right. Wow. You ready? We'll put our mics down and then we'll fight. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. Like. Like. Yup. Damn. You're okay. Three. Two. There. Ooh. Jeez. Oh! Someone messed up the game. It's broken. It's broken. Dang, you beat me, bro. That was the longest the fight's gone, just so yeah, you know. That was a good game. Good Dang, game. that was like 12 rounds. No, thank you so much thank for you. stopping by. Before we let you go, if you could look into the camera and talk to your fans, the people that are excited to root for you and see what you got coming, uh, words that you'd like to leave with them. Uh, you know, just to all my people back home watching, supporting, I love you guys. Thank you for supporting. And to my new fans, you know, soon-to-be fans, you know, welcome. You know, hopefully it's a it's a long journey. So I love that. Just like you went back to look at the Muhammad Ali tapes, they're gonna go, go come back and look yeah. at your stuff. So yeah, to the for to the present and future fans. Thank you guys. Of course, and that was your insider right here with Golden Boy.